Now let's talk about the drive line. Now on an electric motorcycle, it's really not that complicated. Essentially, it's just like a single speed bicycle. Now to work on the drive line, you're going to need to get the cycle up in the air using at least the double kickstand or preferably using a motorcycle jack. This is one that I borrowed from a friend to use on this project. Uh, just make sure that it's strapped down so that it can't tip over. Safety first. Now, since we've got an electric motor over here instead of the original engine and transmission, we're going to need a sprocket that can go on that electric motor. So that's just going to be a standard part that we can get from Farm and Fleet, Tractor Supply, or any kind of a store that deals in basic machine parts. So this here is a hub, and it's pretty straightforward. The only thing to remember about this is that you need to make sure to get one with the shaft hole in this that's the same diameter as your drive shaft, in this case, 7 eighths of an inch. Now you'll notice there, there's no sprocket on here, no teeth. This is just the hub. That's because there's so many different combinations of number of teeth, uh, what type of a chain, and the size of the shaft that they can't account for all of them. So what they do is they sell the sprocket separate from the hub, and then you put the two of those together, and then once you put them together, you weld them. Now, when I started this project, I didn't have a welder. I didn't have any welding experience. So I just took these two pieces over to a local welder and had him go bzzzt, weld that on there, and I was done with it. Now, once this is a single part, you'll be able to slide it onto the drive shaft of the electric motor and then tighten it down using uh, a square key and two set screws. You might also wanna use a little bit of uh, Loctite in there as well. So that's just going to go right onto the electric motor, just like that. Now on the back of the motorcycle, I have a larger than stock sprocket. In fact, this is the original sprocket for the motorcycle. Um, it's got 54 teeth on it, and the one that's on the back of the motorcycle right now actually has 72 teeth. The reason for this is the bigger the back sprocket or the smaller the front sprocket, the greater gear reduction you get. Now on a gasoline engine, uh, you use variable gears through the transmission because the gas engine only provides power at a certain RPM of the engine. Now, if you take a look at that chart that we got that goes along with our electric motor, you'll notice that the torque it produces is almost a flat line. Essentially, the electric motor is going to make a lot of power no matter what speed you're running at. But if you give it some really good low gearing, it's going to pull less amps to get you up and going. So what we want to do is have a big rear sprocket and a small front one to get that low gearing. Now the other thing is that on the front sprocket, you can only get that so small. So if you start off with a big sprocket on the back, it allows you to have um, just a little bit larger sprocket on front. And here's the other thing. These two parts together were about $15. So if I don't love the gearing from the small front sprocket, it doesn't cost me much money to replace it and swap it out. Now on the other hand, replacing that rear sprocket would be considerably more expensive. Now the sprocket that's on there, I got from a company called Sprocket Specialists. They're not the only guys doing it. There's other places that you can go to. But what's kind of neat about them is you just call them up, you tell them how many teeth you want on your sprocket, what motorcycle it's for, uh, and what, what size chain you want to use, and they send it to you in the mail. It really, it just takes four bolts. Now you do have to take the axle off the motorcycle, but that's really not that difficult. In fact, since you already had the motorcycle manual, there's going to be a nice exploded diagram in there that's going to show you exactly how to do that. So once you've got the large sprocket on the back and the small sprocket on the front, you're going to need a chain to connect the two. Uh, also, you're going to need to know how long that chain is. Now this here is just some plain stock chain. Got this from the same uh, farm implement and machine aisle at Farm and Fleet as I got the small front sprocket from. Um, this is actually kind of sticky and gross because uh, when they sell these, they have uh, sort of a sticky grease on them to prevent them from getting rusty. So you might want to use a solvent to strip that off and then uh, before you're ready to ride on the motorcycle, reapply a specialty motorcycle chain lubricant or dressing. 
But what we'll want to do right now is figure out how long the chain needs to be. So to do that, we'll need a tape measure. But this isn't going to work because these really don't go around corners all that well. So instead, you'll probably want to use a real tape measure, which is uh, very flexible, great for measuring this sort of thing. Or if you don't have that, even some string or a piece of rope, wrap that around there and then measure that with your straight tape measure. Once you know how long you need your chain to be, you're going to have to cut it to length. Now you could use an angle grinder or an angle grinder with a cutoff disc in there as long as you're really careful, but a better way to do it is with a chain breaker tool. Uh, this is a pretty simple tool. All you have to do is lay the chain in there and then tighten down the screw until it pops that rivet out, uh, shortening the length of the chain. And then you just wrap the chain on and use a master link. Master link is a simple little thing here. It's a link that you can hook the two ends of the chain on. Once you do, you cover it with that little plate right there, just like that. And then it's got a little clip that holds that plate on. And then you've got a chain on your electric motorcycle. Now, before we go any further, keep in mind you've just created a giant pinch hazard. Up on the front with the chain going around that little sprocket and on the back around that big sprocket, this is a great spot to pinch a finger or other body part. Even without, even without any batteries connected right now, if you move the rear wheel, that's going to move the chain, which will also move the sprocket and the motor on the front here. It's really easy to get a finger pinched in there, so be careful. Now, if we did have the batteries in here, that would be really dangerous if we didn't have a custom chain guard. So before we finish, we're gonna to have to make a custom chain guard for this thing. In the meantime, all we really need to do is make sure that we tension the chain according to the user's manual and tighten and align the back tire uh, just to make sure everything is to spec the way it's supposed to be on the motorcycle. Then of course a chain guard doesn't have to be anything that fancy. In this case, it's just a piece of plexiglass uh, cut to the shape to cover. And then that simply uh, goes over the chain here with a couple of screws and a nut and bolt to hold it in place. Now just a quick recap on gearing. Gearing really affects two things. It's going to be your top speed and how much amperage you pull at any speed. Essentially on a DC motor, the higher your voltage is, the faster it's going to spin. They're directly proportional to each other. If you've got a 48 volt system and you go to a 72 volt system, your motor is going to spin 50% faster. Uh, that is if you've got a motor that will support 72 volts. Some motors that are this style will, some others won't, so you have to work within the range of what your motor provides. For example, this motor is designed for up to 48 volts and it'll go up to 150 amps. Essentially, on the gearing, your voltage drives your motor at a certain speed. Now, you actually know what that speed is because the information that you got with your motorcycle actually tells that. It will tell you how many RPMs the motor will spin at a given voltage. So, when you know how fast this is spinning, you can multiply that by your gear ratio and do a little bit of math about how big your tire is around so how many times that back tire is going to spin per minute and you can figure out miles per hour. Essentially, that's your top speed. Now, depending on how you use your motorcycle is really what's going to determine what you need for a top speed. For example, I live just outside a city on the corner of a 45 mile an hour and 25 mile per hour streets. All I need for a top speed is 45 miles per hour. So I've got a pretty good low gear ratio so that I get a lot of acceleration when I'm pulling away from a stop sign or a traffic light, but I'm also minimizing how many amps I'm pulling when I'm just cruising along. Now, if I did want a little bit higher top speed, I could get that by swapping out for a little bit uh, larger sprocket in the front. Now, the downside to that is I'm not gonna have quite as good acceleration and I'm going to be pulling more amps from the battery, which means my range won't be as good. So since I don't do any uh, freeway riding anyways, this works out very well for me. Um, I did do the math and I would certainly be within the range of amperage that my motor is designed to handle uh, if I re-geared up to 65 miles an hour. But why bother? I'm in the city, 
I love that great acceleration I get right off from a stop. And when it's 25 mile per hour speed limits anyways, I'll take the low gearing. Before riding the cycle for the first time, do a final driveline check. Connect the batteries and then power up the system. Here the green light indicates that the motorcycle is on and ready to go. Then just give the throttle a little twist and you'll see that the cycle spins up to speed with both the back wheel and up at the motor. Check the alignment of the two sprockets, make sure there's no unusual wear or noise. If anything looks amiss, disconnect the batteries, make the adjustments, and then test it again. After that, you're ready to roll. Thank mm -hmm. you.